Hey, hey, this is Michael J. with This Old Car. You know, whenever people look back at the uh, early 70s and, uh, you know, these gearheads that talk about the American muscle cars, uh, there's always that one person or one moment that uh, brings up 1972, uh, the year that uh, horsepower numbers suddenly fell off the cliff. It's the year when your favorite uh, big block almost looked like it had been neutered um, overnight. But the funny thing, uh, engines didn't actually get weaker. Uh, they uh, didn't lose pistons. They didn't shrink. They didn't suddenly forget how to burn gasoline. Uh, what did change was the uh, way the horsepower was measured. And that change hit the industry like a punch to the gut. Up until 1972, American automakers uh, used something called gross horsepower. And um, gross horsepower was basically the engine's fantasy profile on a drag strip app, right? No accessories, um, no alternator dragging it down, no power steering pump, no air cleaner, sometimes no real exhaust restrictions just an engine strapped to a dyno with perfect lap conditions running wide open like it was uh, trying to set a land speed record, right? If you think about it, it's um, like bragging about how fast you can run on a treadmill with a fan blowing in your face. Uh, no hills, no backpack, nothing. Then 1972 comes along and boom! Suddenly, the manufacturers have to use net horsepower. And net horsepower is more like real life. Uh, now you test the engine with all the accessories attached, um, real exhaust, um, all the belts, actual intake setup, emissions equipment, the engine as it sits in the car, not on the fantasy dino island. Engines that had been rated at 350 horsepower, well, they suddenly dropped to 260. Some 300 horsepower engines were now in the low 200s. It looked like Detroit suddenly forgot how to build an engine. Uh, the numbers were just finally being reported honestly. Now, for the gearheads watching, here's the deeper piece of uh, the story. Um, gross horsepower was measured with the engine running in its most idealized configuration. They didn't include parasitic losses, you know, the things that sap power from the crankshaft. Uh, when the industry moved to um, SAE net horsepower, all that extra load had to be included. And depending on the engine, especially the bigger V8s loaded up with the accessories, uh, you could see a drop of about 50 to 60, sometimes even 100 horsepower on the spec sheets uh, with absolutely zero mechanical changes. But there was another reason the early 1970s looked so rough for horsepower. And it wasn't just because of the measuring stick. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Right around the same time, emissions regulations tightened. That meant manufacturers had to start lowering compression ratios, adjusting ignition timing, and adding early emissions equipment. Lower compression alone can rob an engine of a noticeable chunk of power. If you take an engine that was running, say, at 10.5 uh, to 1 compression and drop it down into the mid-8s, uh, you can expect double-digit horsepower losses right out of the gate. So here's what happened. First, the numbers dropped because of the measuring change. Then they dropped again because the engines were actually being detuned. But the first drop, the uh, one in 1972, uh, was honestly just a paperwork issue. A reality check on numbers that were a little inflated to begin with. You know, a lot of people assume this is when the uh, muscle car era began its decline. 
that's the cars well he suddenly got weak right but if you actually drive some of those early 1970 engines the uh, ones right before the emissions really kicked in they're still stout just cars old buddy dodge chargers three mm -hmm. classics from day one that charger se is mine when they invented the word style they were looking right at this car got a grill and looks leave same thing on the charger coupe here classic dodge engineering too torsion bars electronic ignition and the charger hardtop over here both got six seats worth of comfort care to join me this is your year to go a 1971 engine rated at 330 gross horsepower uh, might have been making something like uh, 260, uh, 270 net horsepower anyway. So when you see that number appear on a 1972 brochure, um, it's not really the car getting slower, it's the spec sheet becoming more truthful. Now, here's a cool little detail most casual fans don't know. Before this change, manufacturers weren't shy about being a little optimistic <laughs> with their gross horsepower numbers. Uh, some engines were tested with uh, special exhaust headers, some with more aggressive timing, and some even under um, conditions that didn't quite reflect the car you'd be buying off the lot. For example, take something like the uh, 1971 Chevy 350 LT1. In 1971, it was rated around 330 gross horsepower. In 1972, with um, net measurements, uh, that same engine suddenly dropped to the uh, mid-200s. And yet, uh, the internals didn't change. Same cam, same heads, same bore and stroke, same everything. It was... Um, still a snappy small block it just didn't have inflated numbers anymore and uh, this wasn't just gm ford chrysler amc everyone took the hit a lot of owners at the time were confused or even upset some thought the new cars were weaker dealerships had to explain that the drop was just a recalculation of course after 1972 the uh, regulatory landscape kept tightening Catalytic converters came in, fuels switched to low lead or even unleaded. Compression ratios had to fall even more. That's when engines uh, actually started to lose real power across the board. The mid-70s, while well, they were rough, no question. If you've driven a mid-70s smog era 350 with 145 horsepower, yeah, you definitely felt it. But the key thing to remember about 1972 is that the big drop that year wasn't um, automotive doom, it was a measuring tape swap. There's a big difference between this engine makes less power and this engine looks like it makes less power because we're finally being honest about it. And honestly, if you've ever dynoed an older car, especially a stock late 60s or a early 70s muscle car, you'd know that gross horsepower numbers were pretty optimistic all along. So the next time someone says, man, in 1972, the horsepower just fell off like a bad transmission. I know, kind of cheesy, right? Well, you can tell them the truth. Man, those engines didn't go soft. The numbers finally got real. If anything, the 1972 car gives you a more honest picture of what's going on under the hood. Hey, this is Michael J. with This Old Car. What'd you think? What'd you think about horsepower changes in 1972? Yes, no. We want you, the gearheads, and uh, those who own 71, 72, 73s to, to climb in. Comment. I am dying to know what you guys have to say. Leave your comments below. Hey, we want to thank everybody who's subscribing to the channel. We are up and headed towards 100,000 subscribers, little by little, and we need your help. If you are not a subscriber, like, subscribe, and hit the button for future notifications. Michael J. with This Old Car. You guys take care.